Now, for more on this revolving door and the influence economy here in the U.S., I spoke with Joe Minerick. He's the Senior Vice President and Director of Research at the Committee for Economic Development. We started by talking about why a revolving door policy between Capitol Hill and Wall Street is seen as such a negative thing. It certainly is the case that you would not want to restrict the hiring of a government official with decision-making responsibility to be someone who doesn't know anything about the, the issue that he has to deal with. Um, Albert Einstein was a genius. I'm not sure I'd want him for the Secretary of the Treasury. Um, but particularly in the finance industry, as I mentioned, there's a sense that uh, playing a role in the financial sector uh, would be disqualifying for someone being the Secretary of the Treasury. I mean, turn the clock back to uh, September 11, 2001. The fact that we had officials in the Treasury Department and in the Federal Reserve who were well known in the financial markets and who were respected helped to keep our economy and our financial system on an even keel. If you believe that you had rookies in charge of the, the financial operations of the federal government at that time, uh, you, the results could have been disastrous. So yes, there is resistance to the notion of having people with experience involved. There is the potential for abuse too. People with experience could conceivably move into government create regulations or right. create precedents that would favor their prior employers and then turn around and go back to their prior employers. That's possible. So with that being said, is it just a question of more so morality versus legality? Because, I mean, these people are becoming private citizens once they leave these roles. So is, is it fair then to, to have to put those limits on them? The most frightening thing to me is that we could conceivably create rules such that someone from a particular industry who is not independently wealthy, uh, if he or she is offered the opportunity to serve in office and if he or she really wants to pursue the national interest, uh, he or she would have to figure into the calculation of whether or not to take that job, the possibility that there might be some restriction post-service, some cooling off period, such that uh, that person would not be able to make a living. Uh, if you create a system that works that way, then only people of independent wealth can go into government. I'm not sure that that's a healthy situation. What do you think would be a better option than to perhaps write these things into people's contracts, but as you're saying, it may then prevent them from even taking jobs in the first place if they know there has to be this cooling off period afterwards. What would be a better solution, do you think? Well, I, I think there are probably two components. One is, you need to have leadership from the top, and by that I mean the President of the United States, who cannot deal with every single appointment. That's, that's not conceivable. But the President can set a tone such that high ethical standards are imperative and important, and make clear that if there should develop a situation where ethical standards have been called into question, the President is not going to be happy. Uh, beyond that, we should have rules that are based not on the person's associations, but rather on the person's behavior. If you are coming from a particular firm, uh, you certainly should have to divest yourself of investments that are based on that firm. You certainly should be required to recuse yourself in particular decisions that affect that firm. And there should be rigid standards that would uh, impose penalties if post-employment you go back to that employer, particularly if you have made any steps that uh, provide a reward to that employer for sending you to government and then from taking you back. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to hire good people, and that includes the election of the president, and you have to trust people of high moral standards to behave in a fair and impartial way. And many people go into government because they are dedicated to the national interest and they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. They ought to have the opportunity to do that.